the fusion mechanism can be thought of as cleaving the precursor or priming this fusion machinery, localizing the virus to the cell by receptor binding, ultimately by uptake into the endosome, and the triggering of refolding in the case of flu by low pH, in the case of other viruses, let us say, by a receptor or co-receptor binding, that leads to this stereotypical sequence of events. Exposure of the fusion peptide, that's that extended intermediate, insertion of the fusion peptide into the target membrane, and a folding back of the protein that brings together the target and viral membranes. And it is that folding back that overcomes the first of the kinetic barriers. There is a substantial kinetic barrier to squeezing two membranes any closer together than about 10 or 15 angstroms. That is why liposomes, let's say, in solution are stable. Although once fused, they are um, even more stable. But a liposome preparation doesn't spontaneously fuse because of that kinetic barrier to um, bringing two bilayers close together. And it is that process that is at least one of the crucial ways in which these proteins facilitate membrane fusion. And they do so by recovering free energy uh, in this foldback process because the primed state is in one way or another metastable. So um, the fusion of membranes by influenza virus can be thought of then as a triggering process. We don't show actually the silic acid attachment here, but a triggering process that leads to dissociation of the HA1 domains at the top. But there happens to be a disulfide bond down here that keeps HA1 from actually floating away. But some experiments um, done already uh, 10 or 15 years ago, actually more than that, nearly 20 years ago now that I think of it, um, showed that the, uh, if you knit the tops together, then this process can't occur. So we know that this, um, that this dissociation of the tops from the stalk occurs. And that allows the stalk, the HA2 stalk, to unfold and refold, so to speak. That is, allows the fusion peptide to flip up, associate with the target bilayer, and then, along with the rest of the protein, collapse together to squeeze the two bilayers together, leading to, to membrane fusion. I said that the structure of the post-fusion conformation of, or the, the description of the post-fusion conformation of the flu hemagglutinin of HA2 corresponds to a trimer of hairpin-like structures. And it turns out that for large numbers of these so-called class I viral fusion proteins, that simple analogy is true. Indeed, in the case of HIV and SIV, the hairpin is particularly simple. It's just a helix coming down, a loop turning around, and a helix coming up. And so the membrane fusion process um, is nicely represented in this animation from Gail McGill uh, based on the structure of the post-fusion state of the HIV and SIV conformational proteins, which you can see going from the extended intermediate at the beginning to um, a fused state at the end. 